What's up, Danny Joe and Jazz ladies out there? This is your boy, Sasha also broadcasting live from the cabaret in the sky. And when I'm not busy doing my soloing on my two horn, I just tune in to the Olympics presents We All Be News and Radio. Somebody do that, 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 Oh, yeah. In honor of James Reese Europe's life and accomplishments, the James Reese Europe American Legion Post Number no. 5 was established in his childhood hometown of Washington, D.C., shortly after his untimely death in 1919. On February 18, 2000, 80 years after his death, the legion bearing Europe's name finally paid their respects to their almost forgotten namesake with a reflame ceremony at Europe's grave. Our post was named in honor of James Reese Europe in 1919, but to my knowledge, uh, no one ever stopped to put a flower on his grave, stated Thomas L. Campbell, the post commander. Frankly, we didn't know much about him until we read a story about him in the American Legion magazine about a year ago. I thought it was time we did something to show some appreciation for the man whose name is on our post. Unfortunately, the fact that it took so long for this great man to be honored by a legion even named for him shows it is all too easy to forget about the past no matter how tragic or glorious which makes our present that determines our future Europe in the end sacrificed himself for a dream that seemed so near his time yet so far out of reach as time marches on to forget Europe and what he contributed is to basically forget the reasons why blacks marched and organized in the 1960s and while they fought for their rights in the 1860s. Europe was a man who never settled for second best. He was a man that wanted the best for not only him, but for anybody who was willing to work hard and never relented in their pursuits of happiness. Europe was truly blessed with every gift one could want in hoping to be a success in this world. Every gift except time. If he had lived, would he be as well known as a W.C. Handy, a Duke Ellington, Count Basie, or George Gershwin are today instead of a near anonymous transitional figure? Would these people ever be known if people like Europe, Fletcher Henderson, King Oliver, or Buddy Bowden never existed? No matter the answer, one thing for certain is that all of the above great ones mentioned Handy, Ellington, Basie, and Gershwin were in some form and fashion influenced and even promoted by the man known as Big Jim Europe. Whether you religiously listen to him play piano at a Harlem nightclub while sitting curbside at the tender age of seven. George Gershwin? He played your comp compositions over and over at the hottest society dance halls in the country. W.C. Handy. Work with and even led two of your most important musical mentors in the concert hall. Will Marion Cook or Battlefield. Willie the Lion Smith. All the while growing up in his hometown of Washington, D.C. Hearing Europe's fans and fellow musicians sing his praises. Duke Ellington. Being able to make a great New York City debut at Carnegie Hall without worrying about race being a factor and keeping you from being at that wonderful integrated venue while performing the songs of your people from spirituals to swing, a la Count Basie, Europe and many others paved the way for your success. Before there was a Harry Pace and Black Swan Records, a Barry Gordy and Motown Records, a Russell Simmons and Def Jam Records, a Suge Knight and Death Row Records, a Master P and No Limit Records, or a P. Diddy and Bad Boy Records. There was a James Europe and the Club Club Union, whose music and musicians were a mainstream success in the early days of the music and entertainment industry before there was an American Bandstand, Soul Train, MTV, 
and BET. Matter of fact, James Europe was popular before there was TV. Europe's fingerprints are all over today's music and entertainment industry, no matter if we choose to acknowledge that or not. Noble Sizzle touched on the significance of how original and uniquely irreplaceable Europe was when he stated that there was only one Jim Europe. He also related how Europe's contributions were beyond comparison and equally when he stated the following. There was years of experience behind that sweep of his arms and anyone who tried to follow him would just be out of his mind. I was sure that conducting was not the field in which I was to carry on his life's dreams. In my mind, his band should remain in the memory of those who heard it led by Lieutenant James Reese Europe. And that's how it ended. On Europe's legacy and place in black and American music history, Yubi Blake eloquently once stated the following. Before Europe, Negro musicians were just like wandering minstrels, playing in a saloon and passed their hat and that's it. Before Jim, they weren't even supposed to be human beings. Jim Europe changed all that. He made a profession for us out of music. All of that we owe to Jim. If only people would realize it. People don't realize yet today what we lost when we lost Jim Europe. He was the savior of Negro musicians. And in class with Booker T. Washington and Martin Luther King Jr.